My amp unit, it's a double video Wednesday. We got one coming at you right now that you're currently viewing, and in a few hours, later this afternoon, we'll have a second video. The first one, this one, is gonna be a little bit more cool, calm, and collected. Just grab your hot coffee, kick your feet up, and we're gonna go over some news that has transpired over the last 24 hours that the Amplified Man feels is newsworthy and should be discussed between the two of us. Or the thousands of us. And then later on this afternoon, you might want to put that hot coffee away, get yourself a cold beverage, still kick your feet up, and watch and listen on as the Amplified Man gets amplified on several individuals. And you'll know why this is a double video Wednesday in the second video. But again, the first video, a little bit more calm, relaxed. We're just going to go over some news. You want the amplification? Come back later today. In this video, we're going to talk Eric Bischoff. My thoughts on the shakeup over on Fox and SmackDown and Bruce Prichard replacing him. We're going to talk about the big mega draft trade that Triple H has teased over the last couple of days. And what it actually was, and was it worthy of the hype? We're going to talk Naomi and the Usos. Where are they, and what's the plans for them? We're going to talk Seth Rollins being pulled from one of his crown jewel matches. We're going to talk the Raw ratings for this hyped-up draft episode this week. Did they go up? Did they decline? We're going to talk all this. First, I just want to touch up on a rumor that is actually truth from the horse's mouth himself, and that's Mike Kanellis, and that is that Mike Kanellis has indeed asked for his release from WWE. However, Maria Kanellis is stating that she has not. Maria Kanellis issued a statement that either matched or is even longer than Mike Kanellis' statement on social media. And Maria says, while I stand by my husband's side 100%, I have not asked for my release. However, Maria Canellis, I believe, is pregnant yet again. So it's like she's released anyway, right? I mean, since Maria Canellis has signed with WWE, it's been a pregnancy after a pregnancy, right? The last two years, two babies, one per year. At this rate, why not sign a WWE contract? I think WWE from the beginning were the losers here. A couple of years ago, a year and a half, whatever it was, when they first signed with WWE, I raised the question. I said, WWE is in a state of desperation right now. Raw SmackDown at the time, drawing their lowest ratings of all time, and their big signings that WWE is going out there and getting is Mike and Maria Kanellis. Now, I'm not saying Mike and Maria don't offer anything to the pro wrestling world, but they just don't fit into the WWE category slash scenario. I just know how Vince McMahon thinks, and I know how he would use superstars like Mike Kanellis and or Maria. And I knew this was a marriage that was destined to be doomed and destined for failure from the jump. And of course I was right. This has been nothing but one headache after the other. From the moment they signed, Maria's been pregnant. From the moment they signed, Mike Kanellis was at the tail end of his substance abuse issues, so his mind still was not fully there yet. You want to give people time. Here he is at the tail end of substance abuse issues, and he's jumping into a big WWE contract where he's got to be on the road nearly 300 days of the year. That's really great for somebody with issues that they really need to get in check and get themselves in check. And that was part of Mike Kanellis' statement. He was going home no longer happy. He was miserable and he didn't want to see his wife or have his wife and kids have to see that side of him. When somebody is not mentally right and they're just in a bad place mentally, the last thing they need to be doing is going somewhere where they're miserable being away from their loved ones for so long and just being in touch with just their demons. I can go on and on with this situation. I know to a lot of you guys, it's just Mike and Maria. They're nobodies. They're jobbers. Who cares, BC? You're talking way too long about them. But for good reason. You know, there's a story within the story of just signing these two individuals. And I feel like 
if we don't work out the inner linings of what went wrong in a situation, we're just doomed to repeat the same situation going forward. And that's what we're trying not to do. Um, Mike Kanellis has asked for his release. We don't know right now if Vince is going to grant that at a time where AEW is around and Vince is trying to hog up all this talent. We don't know if he'd even let somebody like Mike Kanellis go. Maria, on the other hand, says she is staying with the company, but again, she's pregnant, so you're not going to see her for many months, and even when she does, and if she does return, what placement is she going to have in the company? What are they really going to do with Maria? It's rhetorical. Nothing. I know how this company operates. Maria's time in WWE, unfortunately, for that type of persona, that time has passed. And then WWE has moved on, whether for better or worse, Mike Kanellis and Maria were doomed from the beginning. And the company was doomed with talents like Maria and Mike because it just wasn't a good marriage. It's okay. Sometimes things just don't work. You could say WWE could have and should have done more with Mike and Maria, but I question that. How far were they really going to captivate us? It's Mike and Maria here, guys. It's not The Rock and Trish Stratus. It's not Lita and Stone Cold. Anyway, that's a story I just wanted to get out there. A lot of people asking me about that. That's the Mike Kanellis situation. Mike Kanellis is gone. Maria is pregnant, but says she's still with the company and did not ask for her, her release. Moving on. Let's get to the bigger stories here. Eric Bischoff has been replaced over on the WWE Blue brand as executive director, he has gotten the boot. And we have received word that not only has he been replaced on SmackDown as the executive director, he's been booted from the company. That's right. He has been let go by WWE. And he has been replaced by Bruce Pritchard, who, yes, has near, nearly 30 years of experience with Vincent Kennedy McMahon, or the bulk of that 30 years with Vincent Kennedy McMahon, which tells you everything you need to, to know. Yes, it is true. Bruce Pritchard, as much as he is highly respected in the industry, he is one of Vince McMahon's yes-men slash ass-kissers. So I guess you could say the more things change, the more they stay the same. Bruce Pritchard is now in that top spot, and that's one of Vince McMahon's henchmen. So anything Vince McMahon wants... It's going to get done even tenfold now, even when Vince is not in the arena. Even when Vince cannot make that phone call, Bruce Pritchard knows how Vince McMahon thinks, and he will make sure the job gets done. Vince McMahon-esque. Vince McMahon style. And that's what I don't like about this. At least Bischoff would butt heads a little bit. Just like we knew Paul Heyman was going to do on the red brand. So we knew that we could get some change. Once Eric Bischoff gets used to this role, we could see change. Real change. It'll take some time, but Eric Bischoff will butt heads with you. But here we are just a little over a month later, and Bischoff has already gotten Das Boot. And we're hearing it's not only because he was butting some heads with some other executives from Fox. We're hearing it's because he just sucked at his job. Like, literally, they either couldn't find him or when they were asking him things, he didn't have the right answers that he just didn't know or wasn't catching on quickly. And after several weeks, WWE was like, listen, this train is leaving the, 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 the station. Either you're on this train or you got to catch the next one, buddy, on a whole different line. But this train's leaving the station. <laughs> it, appears, it appears that Bischoff just didn't want to be bothered. And it, it's, it's, you know, we talk about Mike and Maria Kanellis in, in that WWE relationship being doomed from the jump. I, I think we all kind of saw this with Eric Bischoff in WWE once again. And, and I kind of, I remember a, a post that Eric Bischoff put up. I don't know if this was Twitter, but it was on something on social media. And he was driving from, I believe, Colorado to Stanford, Connecticut with his dog in the passenger seat. And he was pretty much just up and moving his entire life to move over to Stanford. And I'm thinking, man, I would spend like a couple of months in like a trial period. I would get like a hotel for at least a month and make sure that this is going to last. 
Because everybody always sends me these things online about WWE looking for creative writers and everybody always sends it to me on social media. BC, please save us. And I say thank you guys, I appreciate it, but I would never send in a resume to WWE. Not because I wouldn't want to work with and for WWE, because that would be, in a way, a dream career position for the Amplified Man. However, why would I not send a resume these days, last week, last month, last year, or in the foreseeable future, why would I not send a resume in? Because I know, just like Bischoff, wham, I wouldn't even last a month over there. I would piss off Vince McMahon so much that within 48 hours, two days, I'm out. And that's why I wouldn't even waste a resume right now. If things actually changed and the right leadership was put in place, the Amplified Man would absolutely put in a resume. And I am a writer... Guys, I've written for fictional, for the most part, two of those were kind of screenplay format, but four novels in their own right. I've written three screenplays for film. Currently, one day it'll get finished, directing my own movie that I've written and am starring in. Enough patting myself on the back. My point is, I have the background in writing. So I'm exactly who they would be looking for, and I have the knowledge of pro wrestling, more specifically WWE, but I can't save you guys, because I can't save the company right now. And the whole part of me wanting to work with and for WWE, the key word is also with, not just for. I want to work with them, and if they're not going to see my visions, then I cannot bow down and kiss Vince McMahon's ass like everyone else does. I'm not one of those individuals. So I refuse. And I just remember Bischoff driving across the country with his dog. And I'm thinking, this is not smart, Bischoff. Give it a trial period, man. And sure enough, here we are just a month later. And he's driving back across town towards Colorado. And hopefully still with his dog by his side. Now Bischoff has, again, Bruce Pritchard has replaced him. And Eric Bischoff has sent out a statement. And I quote from Eric Bischoff. Bruce is a great producer and friend, and I am certain he is going to thrive in his position. He's going to be working with a great team of the most dedicated and hardworking people that I have had the pleasure of working with and getting to know. End statement. So his whole statement had nothing to do with his own scenario, but just praise for Bruce Pritchard. Something's up here. Either he was told to say that, he was put up to say that, as part of some severance package. Hey, we'll give you this and you just make sure you leave on good terms. Put out this statement. But I don't know if that would be the only statement that I would put out there if I just moved across country and got the boot. Das boot a month later. I wouldn't just be praising the guy taking my job. Now everyone's thinking AEW. Bischoff, AEW, perfect. Uh, how about Team Hell No? The last thing AEW needs right now, they have momentum. The last thing they need is a guy like Eric Bischoff from 20 years ago's WCW Nitro days to be coming in. And then what? Is Hulk Hogan going to join them? And they're going to try to recreate that shit like they tried to do in TNA? Yeah, that was a complete flop. At the time, TNA had a little bit of momentum and they put that right into the ground. They drove it into the ground. The last thing AEW, a concept that is so fresh and original, just organic to the, to the core, the last thing they need is somebody like Bischoff coming in. Sometimes you can't just rest on laurels. We respect everything Bischoff did and he was a creative mind and he still may be today, but the business has evolved. And unfortunately... You know, bringing in guys like Bischoff, as much as we love that nostalgia, it just doesn't work. And that was our reservations with him even coming to WWE. But we held on to maybe he's got the creative vision still. But if that's the case, then just bring back Vince Russo. Where does it end? So that's my thoughts, guys. I, I know I said this was supposed to be cool, calm, and collected, this video. The Amplified video is later this afternoon when I get amplified on certain individuals inside the WWE bubble. But, I don't know. I talk pro wrestling, I get all passionate. You guys know that. But that's my thoughts on it, man. Um, moving on. Because I know I can spend another 10 minutes. It's a double video day. I want to get you guys, uh, you know... 
doing what you got to do today. And so when you come back this evening, you can watch the second video. So I don't want to keep you here too long. We'll move on. The big announcement, the, 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 the last 24 to 36 hours has been all about this, uh, this huge trade, this blockbuster trade that is going to be happening in the near future. And Triple H actually appeared on the very first episode of WWE Backstage. It debuted yesterday, immediately following the Yankees game on FS1. So if you were catching the Yankees and Astros game immediately following, WWE premiered their backstage. Um, and Triple H appeared on this and he announced the blockbuster trade. And you talk about not living up to the hype. Alexa Bliss was the big move. Triple H announced that Alexa Bliss has been traded to SmackDown with Nikki Cross. So it appears they're going as a, as a unit, as a team still. That's your big fucking announcement that you went on FS1 with Alexa Bliss. And, and here's the just the stupidity in this organization. This is what I mean about them just not knowing what the fuck they're doing ever. This is what I mean about them not even following their own rules consistently. They say they, that this is a blockbuster trade. Now, a blockbuster trade means two teams or two entities actually traded one of their high-power, high-quality stars for one of your high-quality, high-power stars, right? No, instead, Alexa Bliss gets moved over and over to SmackDown and Raw gets nobody. No one. Triple H started fumbling over his words at, during this part. It was hilarious. He's like, oh, Raw will get uh, future uh, considerations in uh, future uh, draft picks. And I'm like, wait, what? This makes no sense. This isn't Major League Baseball. You're not going to get uh, future $50,000 and uh, next year's second and third round picks. WWE doesn't keep a storyline for two fucking weeks flawlessly. You think next year they're going to be like, oh yeah, remember a year ago when they got Alexa? Well, now Raw gets two number one picks to SmackDown's number one. They're not going to do that. So Triple H is fumbling over his words and talking about uh, uh, considerations, probably cash. Like they're trying to be like a real legit sport like baseball. We're going to get cash considerations and uh, future draft picks. But here's the problem. All the draft picks have already been called for. Everybody else, according to WWE's own rules, are called free agents. So if they're free agents, SmackDown can get anybody. Raw can get anybody. So Raw wouldn't need to trade for a free agent. I hope you guys are keeping up with this. I hope you guys are understanding what I'm saying because I'm following WWE's own rules here. And apparently what Triple H is trying to sell us on is that Raw gave up Alexa Bliss. So Raw just gave up Alexa Bliss for nothing. Just to say, oh, in the future, uh, we'll come knocking and, and we'll take one of your people. And SmackDown was just like, okay, Alexa Bliss is such a huge name that we'll take her now and you can come and get Roman Reigns whenever you want. Or you can come and get Brock Lesnar whenever you want. It makes zero sense. They're not even following their own rules. If Raw goes out and gets anybody after this point, then that's just considered a free agent. That wouldn't be a trade. Or what's going to happen in a month from now? Is SmackDown going to be like, oh, by the way, Raw has come for an individual. Raw has came for one of our superstars. They have came for Big E. Now, it just doesn't make sense and it doesn't go with the rules that they have laid down. If you're going to announce a blockbuster trade, it better be an actual trade where a SmackDown star is going to Raw and vice versa. It's very fucking simplistic. Make it happen. Don't be Stunard. Don't be Sammy Simpleton Stunard as much as we love him as a, as a new high-flying talent over at the local bingo hall. You don't actually want to be a Simpleton Stunard in real life. That's the issue that I have with this whole fucking announcement that they made. They hyped up Alexa Bliss. And you gotta feel for Sasha Banks. Now Sasha is once again on the same brand as Alexa Bliss. Sasha just cannot get away from Alexa. Now... Along the same lines, but totally different, the Iconics have been quietly moved over 
to firmly the Raw brand. And apparently this has nothing to do. Now they can try to say it does in the next 24 hours. But this upfront had nothing to do with any trade. The Alexa Bliss trade. The Iconics were just quietly moved right over to the Raw brand. Shh. If we don't say anything, nobody will notice. It was that type of scenario. But the Iconics looked to be over on the Raw brand. Um, and again, nobody even made a real announcement about that. Moving on, because I can go, just like the Bischoff thing, I can go all day talking about this huge Alexa Bliss trade that wasn't huge at all, and it wasn't even a trade. Seth Rollins, let's go there. I want to wrap this up. Again, it's a double video day. I want to get you guys... Uh, kicking ass today. I apologize. I just, I got a lot to talk about in these news stories. What can I say? Seth Rollins, it looks like, it hasn't been officially announced yet, but it looks like in the next few days, Seth Rollins will be pulled from the 5-on-5 five five crown jewel match, Team Hogan versus Team Ric Flair. I told you guys from the jump, a lot of you guys didn't want to believe me, that Rollins was going to have a rematch with Bray Wyatt. At Crown Jewel. And a lot of you guys are like, no, they wouldn't pull double duty. He's already doing the five on five, BC. But I would not steer you guys wrong. Yes, uh, I was correct on this. Uh, Seth Rollins will, in fact, be taking on Bray Wyatt at Crown Jewel. That is a Falls Count Anywhere match that will most likely be decided in a count out victory, knowing WWE. That's right. Think about it. Falls Count Anywhere ends in a count out. WWE and Vincent Kennedy will find a way to do such. Now, it appears that Seth Rollins will be pull not pulling double duty, I should say. He is being pulled from the 5-on-5 five five match. And he will only be in the Bray Wyatt Falls Count Anywhere match. Um, this, again, is not fully announced yet or confirmed. But this is what we are hearing WWE is going to do. They do not want Seth pulling double duty. We'll see if this actually comes to fruition. That's just the news and word that we're getting early this morning. Moving on. Naomi and the Usos, they have been MIA for a long time. Naomi is dealing with what she called was uh, personal issues and health issues that she wanted and needed to take care of. So we think that's just an extension of that. And the Usos, we thought were going to premiere on the premiere of WWE SmackDown on Fox. That was supposed to be their big premiere back. And, and for some reason, WWE kept them off. We are now hearing it's just because they have nothing for them. The Usos are ready for return. Tip-top shape. Nothing is holding them back other than the company that they work for. That is what we're hearing, guys. So if that is the case, that could be the same for Naomi as well. Maybe Naomi is done with her personal issues and she's ready to come back. They just don't have anything for these individuals. And if that is the case, I want you guys to think about this. Naomi in the Usos. The company has nothing for talents like Naomi in the Usos. If that's not tragic to you, then I don't know what would be considered tragic to you. These are talents that would be at the top of any company that they work for. But in WWE, stay home. We have nothing for you. The Raw rating. I'll end it on this, guys, so you can go about your day. And uh, come back later this evening. As I said, there'll be a second video. We're going to get even more amplified. But the Raw rating for this week, a hyped up draft edition of Raw, was a 2.287. That is down 2.36% from last week's 2.334. So again, let me reiterate here. Last week they scored a 2.334. This week a 2.287, down 2.36%. Um, it is not a drastic downgrade. But when you hyped up this huge episode, it's a pretty substantial drop. Now, yes, last week's was the post Hell in a Cell Monday Night Raw, though. So, of course, it's going to be a pretty decent number. If you call 2.3 a decent number, in my opinion, absolutely nowhere near a decent number. But it's going to be bigger than what they've been pulling. But you would expect something as heavily promoted as the draft to be there with it. There shouldn't be a 2.36% drop. But you can't blame people. After the first half an hour of Raw, you pretty much saw where the entire show was going. There was no reason to stick around. The draft wasn't done in any fun, electric, exciting atmosphere. You could get all the information you needed after the show or later in the week by just going to WWE.com, any dirt sheet, or the Amplified Man's channel. 
and I would have told you all the names that are being flopped around. So am I, am I shocked that the number went down? No. Should it have went down? No. This was a heavily promoted draft episode. What does that say for the episodes going forward that are not heavily promoted? I'm telling you, if they don't get their shit together, we're going to start dipping below 2.0 again. And this was supposed to be at a time where we are now in the premiere season. It's a whole new feel. It's a new excitement. Only problem is nobody's feeling it. It's a huge fucking issue. Uh, that's the news I got right now, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this little impromptu video. Hopefully I kept this around 15 to 20 minutes. Hopefully I didn't go over that. And uh, make sure in just a few hours or throughout the day you keep uh, refreshing. Or what you should really be is not just subscribe but notify to the channel. And that way you can do whatever you want. And when I pop up a video, YouTube tells you when I put up the video. That's what you should be. However, even YouTube shits the bet on this and, and they'll take you off the notified list. And I've even had subscribers tell me that YouTube has taken them off the subscription list. So always make sure you're subscribed and notified because YouTube is always up to some shit. Uh, they're more dysfunctional than the McMahon family most of the time. So always make sure you're subscribed and notified. And if you are subscribed and notified, the second I put up that second video later today, wham, wham, you're going to get it. And we're going to get amplified. All right, that's it. Let's go get another coffee and go about our day. I'll see you guys in just a little bit. The Amplified. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yow. Check you later.